a slightly crushed box as much of the stuff that comes from China has. And this is a YAM three-way remote control switch, which it says, Intelligence the house reside good companion, Fre frequency conversional and dowdle engines motivity. I don't even know what that means. But anyway, let's open it up. This was a very cheap unit. Uh, if you just search for the remote controls, you'll find a lot of these YAM units. Um, so the unit has... This is capped, so this will be the antenna. Keep in mind, uh, if this is using, as I'm guessing, it will the capacitive dropper. It might use a little switch mode, but I think it's probably capacitive dropper. Keep in mind that the antenna wire is actually potentially live at mains voltage. It should be treated as being, being live. Um, <coughs> join the power source with the A group on. A on off blue group, B on off white. Oh, right, right, that's the cables, that's the cable colours. Now let's try this out then. Take it to the remote control. No, it doesn't come with a battery. That's annoying. One moment. Sorted. It takes an E2312 volt battery. The sort you can get at Poundland in a pack of quite a lot of uh, this uh, remote control batteries. They're good that way. And when you press this, it does have a little hole then for the LED, but the actual hole circuit board area end of it lights, uh, everything but the actual little hole for the LED lights. So let's uh, hook this up now and see what happens. The yellow, white and blue are the outputs. The black is going to be a common. So we'll tuck that out of the way and we'll just see if it clicks. So let's get the... Let's do a power test on this as well. So let's get the power meter in and the quick test. So keeping this black wire away from the other wires because I'm guessing they switch to the red by the look of it. Let's hook this up. Interesting to note the two, actually just random wires are, random wires are pre-tinned and soldered and the others are that very clearly the aluminium with the copper coating because it's very springy. So if I power this up noting that these wires will be live. I heard something click, or go pop. Power consumption is 2.2 watts. A is clicking something on and off, B is clicking something on and off, C is clicking something on and off, and that's doing all the relays, I think. So, uh, the power consumption varies between about 1.9 watts and 2.3. It's not really that, that bad, actually. Quiescent current is 113 milliamps, which is actually the reactive current, so that's not the actual power consumption, which is just a couple of watts. Uh, so it is going to be a capacitive dropper. Right, so it works. Let's uh, open it up. Before MD asks, this little test unit I used is called the quick test. I have to mention that because people always ask. It's a sort of bench tester for quick connecting of mains. So, um, this is the usual uh, sort of clip together housing look of it. Does it have any charged capacitors in it? Okay, just going to bridge that uh, big capacitor. It's dead. Right, finger test. Yep, it's dead. Okay, so here's the three output relays. Um, it is based on a capacitive dropper. Something that immediately pops out is that I can see these capacitors are across the bridge rectifier. It's a discrete bridge rectifier with capacitor across each diode to suppress the actual the switching of the, the diode. The diode does make a small uh, sort of electrical noise transition when it turns on in each uh, half wave. So that's that's what these capacitors are for, particularly given it's using RF circuitry. Um, so the capacitor is rated 400 volt, 1.5 microfarad, quite beefy. 
This incidentally, if you have uh, remote controls like this and you find that after a while they start playing up, that you turn them on and then after a while the relays just click out again or they start playing up in general. It's often this capacitor that starts to fail. It, it's, it decreases in capacitance value and it just means that it can't put through the power required to keep the relays latched. So um, let's follow this out. Let's look at the chips first. Is it a dedicated RF chip? LM358, it's a op-amp that's being used with discrete circuitry for the receiver. I don't think there's any other circuitry under that. Um, and this 8-pin chip is driving the relays. That will be the decoder, a little microcontroller, and it's got the number on it. I can read the number without the, the magnifying glass. It's very clear. STEDO8, and then underneath it says... BFB510. So that's going to be a little generic microcontroller. And it's switching the transistors, which are 2N5551. And it's switching them through uh, 10K resistors. So let's uh, trace the power supply circuitry. Uh, so the mains comes in. The Two neutrals are common. The live is being switched through the relays to these outputs. The, the red is being switched to the yellow, white and blue. So the red is going straight to the bridge rectifier. The neutral is going through a choke, a little inductor here, um, through the capacitive dropper which has a 330k resistor across it. And then it's going to the bridge rectifier. The output of the bridge rectifier is being clamped by two Zener diodes and two resistors. The, a resistor in series each Zener, Zener diode. I guess that's just to reduce dissipation a little bit. Uh, six to eight ohm resistors in series with the Zener. And just two of those in, in parallel. They are just connected together. Must just be to spread the dissipation. Then it's a... Uh, that electrolytic capacitor across that. So that's going to give it a sort of relatively high starting voltage, which may actually be used to drive the relays. That'll be around about 12 volts then. There's a 78LO5, which is the voltage regulator. Um, I'm guessing this the electrolytic capacitor here will be the regulated 5 volt supply. Yes, it is with a little decoupling capacitor across it as well. There's also a decoupling capacitor input to the five five the uh, seven seven eight L O five voltage regulator. And then that five volts is feeding this microcontroller and this module. With the output from the module it's got four pins the module so it's obviously just a just a, a it's not decoding anything, it's just a, a raw signal. And it's going straight to one of the input pins of the microcontroller. And that's fundamentally it. I see that the relays do have, behind them there's a position for a, a snubber diode to uh, re re protect the transistors from the back EMF spike from the relays. But they've not actually fitted those, I wonder why not. Um, separation inside isn't great. I mean, it's not ele it's not electrical isolation safety thing. It's just the fact that, you know the it's fractional millimeter apart from mains. The difference between main live and neutral the mains. Um, only weak component really in this is ultimately, I guess, the uh, this big capacitor. I'm always doubtful that you know some of them they could actually fry up. Um, but having said that, I've never really seen, except the ones that were grossly overvolted, I've never seen these fail dramatically. Although I'm sure it does happen. So yeah, that's uh, it works. It was clicking. Um, I should 
try it for a range actually. I'm, I'm going to give that a range and just see how far uh, I can get away from it. I should actually connect a little light or something. I'll be back in a moment. Yep, really dodgy botch up, but uh, yeah, it actually works from one end of the house to the other, which is pretty good. I wonder how, I don't think there's any sort of pairing or encoding involved in these, so I suppose if you had more than one, uh, I don't know if they come with different codes or they're all matched to code. Um, so I, I don't 100% know if you, you know, there's a risk that if a neighbour had one of these that, you know, you'd be able to take control of it or they could take control over your lights. Uh, now the circuitry, I doodled it out while I was at this. And uh, it breaks down into modules. The first is the power supply. So the, there's a small choke uh, inductor, the 1.5 microfarad capacitor with a 330k discharge resistor, and then the bridge rectifier would be made of discrete diodes with 2.2 nanofarad capacitors across it across each diode. That then feeds this section here, the plus 12 volts, and it's clamped down by this uh, arrangement of what appear to be 12 volt zeners. I stuck a, I stuck my bench meter across one of the zeners and just turned it up until the current started rapidly increasing and it was around about 12 volts. So 12 volt zeners with a 68 ohm resistor in, in series and just two of them, so I'm guessing that's just for dissipation. Then for smoothing, there's a 470 microfarad 25 volt uh, electrolytic and a decoupling capacitor, which I think is probably going to be 100 nanofarad. Is that even readable? No, it's not readable. It's 100 nanofarad. Is the other one 100 nanofarad? I would expect it. Yep, uh huh. So uh, I'll just uh, write that down 100 nano. And that's 100 nano over there as well. So uh, yeah, main uh, smoothing capacitor, and that's the 12 volt supply that's used for to derive the 5 volt supply from, plus it's also used to switch the relays. There's a 70LO5 voltage regulator which just drops the 12 volts down to 5 volts, and it's got a 220 microfarad smoothing capacitor uh, and 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor. The after that, the circuitry is simply the modules and microcontrollers. You've got the RF receiver is powered from the 5 volts, and it's got its antenna going in. Uh, that's this white wire here. Uh, and then it just has one connection going across to the microcontroller, and the microcontroller then does everything. It uses, it's got a 10K resistor to the base of the transistor, which is, of course, the 2N. Uh, let's get this magnifying glass into this. Five 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 one, and that just pulls down the relay coil here um, from the twelve volt supply, but without the diode across the coil, which is just cheaping it a bit too much. I notice when you turn it on, it, one connection does come in. It appears that one of the relays just does power up by default. Uh, it says join the power source with the A group on, and I don't know if I... Yes, that must be the... Yep. So when you connect to the power, one of the relays will by default turn on, but the other two will remain off, and then you can control them individually or as a complete group uh, with a master on-off. So you know what? It, it's simple. It works. It's. I don't know how securely encoded it is. I don't know if there's a uh, encoding... Oh, actually, there's a barcode in this. I wonder if it is matched from one unit to the other. Maybe this microcontroller does have a code programmed into it. Um, I wonder if there's a way to teach it. Uh, I don't see any sort of button or anything like that. Other than uh, one of the, there is a pin brought out, or there is a spare pin the microcontroller that is just in a floating pad there. I wonder if that's used as part of the programming. Uh, not sure. But um, yeah, it, it works. It's very cheap. I can't remember how much this was. It's a, it's a, uh, yeah, I'll see if I can find a link to these and I'll put it in the description down below. I can't actually remember who I got this from. But um, yeah, it's, it's you know what, it looks reasonable enough. It, it works and it seems to have a decent range. So uh, quite an interesting little unit. And just for completeness, the inside the remote control, which uh, has a anonymous 8-pin chip, which they've actually got the facility for six buttons in here with a couple of diodes to allow the multiplex and the buttons. The 12 volts, the, it's not feeding the chip directly. Um, there seems to be 
Well, it looks like a transistor, but it might not be. It might be an improvised little voltage regulator of some sort. 2TY? Is that just a standard transistor? Or is that some regulating function? Uh, there's another transistor which is uh, being used for the RF section and antenna with some support components in it, and it's called a 3EM. Um, I really should find a chart for these uh, surface mount components. You usually do find uh, what they are if you search about enough, but these very abbreviated codes, sometimes you find that they mean several different, you know, several different components use the same codes. But yeah, it's basic. It's uh, There's not really much else to this. It really is just, uh, there's nothing on the back of the circuit board. It's just what you see is what you get there. But um, yeah, it's all together, you know, for the money, it's buttons, uh, and it seems to be quite a functional design.